Blog Talk Radio. This is the News in 10. Boston Red here for Boston Red on the World on the 10th day of September 2013. We have had movement in the Syrian Civil War crisis. That's the way it's seen from North America. An inordinate amount of time, money, etc. Political uh, power has been attached to this particular incident. The Congress of the U.S., which is two houses, have been busy uh, thinking about this now that they're back then as we are on the eve of the used to be and perhaps to some of uh, the all-important September 11th. That was a world trade action. That was part of the uh, excuse that G.W. Bush in the final analysis gave uh, for the attacks uh, on Iraq and the assassination of President uh, Saddam Hussein along with uh, weapons of mass destruction. It is sort of a parallel matter with what is going on now here in the U.S. And also the uh, current president, Barack Obama, used uh, the 9-11 crisis as a reason to continue the war in Afghanistan. The, both the war in Afghanistan or in Kabul are now, it is winding down. And in uh, Iraq, the American troops basically are gone. There's a heavy embassy still there, but they are gone. Trillions of dollars later and virtually nothing to show for it at all other than a bunch of holes in the ground. Uh, hundreds of thousands of people are uh, killed. So where is the economic uh, imperative there? Where is the national interest? Where is the uh, strategic interest? Uh, there is none. And those that are harping now about something of a moral or imperative in Syria, where were they? But they're in the dark now because this whole uh, episode changed when the Syrians accepted the Russian uh, proposal, and it was given by the uh, Russian ambassador, Sergei uh, uh, Ludinov, and uh, it was put forward by the Russian president, V.I. Putin, President Putin, a judo master. You'll hear after we are finished here a very short uh, interview here, Al Jazeera, with Professor uh, Kimberly Martin. She's at uh, Bernard uh, College. She's an in, 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 uh, expert in international affairs. And this is from Al Jazeera, and I'll just read it. President Bar- uh, Obama agreed on Tuesday to UN talks over the Russian proposal that would see serious stockpiles of chemical weapons destroyed as the White House seemingly pivots away from military strikes. In a day that saw a flurry of diplomatic action, the government of uh, President Basad al-Assad appeared to accept the, uh, the Russian proposal. They did, in fact, do that under which the Assad stockpile of chemical weapons would be placed under international control. Meanwhile, France said it plans to submit a resolution to the Security Council demanding that Damascus comply with demands to destroy or dismantle its chemical weapons. The uh, Syrian uh, Foreign Minister, Wadi el uh well, Amutli, yeah, well, anyway, said Syria wants to join the International Convention outlawing the use of chemical weapons and was ready to provide information about weapons stockpiles. Al Muli uh, also voiced uh, support for the Russian initiative and said Damascus uh, wanted to hand over all its uh, chemical weapons. That was a report from uh, Reuters. The development came before widely anticipated national address uh, by uh, President Obama on the Syrian case in which uh, he's still expected to make the case for limited missile strikes. The Secretary uh, John Kerry, who is labeled a liar by uh, President Putin and the man, as they say, uh, in the middle of the ring mass in the circle, uh, the circus. A bunch of follies going on there. He called it a little eeny teeny uh, uh, raid. Um, had uh, exacerbated uh, some of the supporters, such as the former presidential candidate, one John McCain. According to him, is seeking congressional approval. They can forget about that. Meanwhile, uh, V.I. Putin said Tuesday he hopes the uh, Russian chemical weapons 
A handover plan will uh, be a good step towards a peaceful solution for the Syrian conflict. However, Putin told reporters that uh, the plan can work only in the event when we hear the American side and those who support the USA uh, in this sense reject the use of force. Now, that has not been rejected yet. Uh, the U.S. and their associates, uh, including uh, Cameron, The president spoke, of course, with Cameron about the proposal, and this is from the other zero here. And uh, Francois Ulian, uh, the president of France, all three parties agreed to work closely with Russia and China to ensure the uh, variability of and enforcement uh, of destruction of weapons. The U.S. has always been on verifying in the salt talks, etc. How do we verify something? How do we enforce uh, something? That is a legacy um, of an American mentality of uh, force, of uh, police power. We saw it in the Katrina episode where, whereby uh, they unleashed a police action before the humanitarian rescue action. They sent various police units from all over the U.S., had them into uh, New Orleans, a majority uh, African-American city, to literally patrol the uh, city for looters, which was absurd. But it shows a mentality that is is based on a policeman of the world type thing. It's uh, on the uh, Wilsonian uh, foreign policy from Woodrow Wilson, a known uh, racist who segregated the uh, governmental, the government in the U.S. from the French foreign minister, Lorraine uh, Fabian, suggested uh, that Moscow was uh, not necessarily enthusiastic to a binding resolution. Well, he's just talking. So there's been squirrels around here. Uh, we'll see when they meet. Uh, we had a very fruitful round of talks with uh, Sergei uh, Levinoff uh, yesterday, and he proposed an initiative related to chemical weapons. And the evening we agreed to the Russian, uh, uh, we already talked about that. That's uh, El Munzi. Mun this is the uh, Syrian foreign minister. And France plans to submit a resolution, well, to be turned over to international control. Well, they are going to be turned over to international control in the uh, weaning hours. The President Obama told ABC that any proposed strike against Syria would be absolute, uh, would uh, be put on hold if uh, the President Assad turned over his weapons. The United States allies have accused him of using weapons, but they really not come up with the proof. France wants to condemn the attack, in other words, for a, what we call here a monkey wrench in between. While uh, Obama calls Syria's response to potential positive event, he was then talking to ABC. He said it needs to be with a grain of salt. Well, the, the President Obama has to say something because he's made all these appearances uh, on various uh, national media and it was broadcast uh, his speech tonight on the BBC, but it will all be a waste of time because the action has now moved uh, to the Russian Republic and over to the United Nations. So all of this uh, ranting and raving uh, by uh, these people have uh, turned out to be literally a waste of time. So what we will see uh, there will uh, be absolutely nothing. Let's take a quick look at the BBC. We're going to be a little late with our broadcast, but nonetheless we'll get it up and we'll air it uh, here. Just basically uh, the same uh, thing. Uh, we have an election, incidentally, in the U.S. in the city of New York. Uh, for mayor there, we'll have more of that on uh, Boston Red uh, on uh, Wednesday uh, morning. So there's a, a dispatch by the BBC. The U.K., the U.S., and France want a timetable. They always do, but uh, the consequences of failure, it, it doesn't really matter because after this resolution and this action, they were not going to get a resolution from Congress. That was a certainty. He would have failed there. This is the President Obama. So he's not in really a position now to 
uh, demand anything, period, uh, as far as this is concerned. The Syrian foreign minister uh, was willing to become a party to a chemical convention. He told Interfax News Agency, we are ready to honor our commitments on this convention, including providing information about these weapons. So that story has uh, basically ended, uh, and there has been a previous evident discussion uh, between the uh, Vladimir Putin and uh, Barack Obama on the idea of placing uh, on the international control at the G20 uh, as a way basically out of this. The Chapter 17 permits military action on uh, if other measures do not succeed. Chapter 8, we're talking about the UN here. Uh, Stipulates peaceful uh, methods of resolution. Now, Kerry is still in that direction, uh, but this uh, bully boy ac action here is obviously not going to work. It doesn't work uh, for the rest of the world. Uh, the prime time address, in our opinion, is a uh, waste of time. It'll be on the BBC at uh, 2100. Uh, uh, time that'll be at GM and let's see GMT. That'll be at one o'clock uh, GMT time on, and I, I guess that is uh, at nine o'clock uh, Eastern time uh, tonight uh, in the U.S. And they will uh, broadcast it, but uh, we don't advise people uh, to tune into that because that basically the speech uh, by the president will be worthless in the sense that there is nothing to talk about. To U.S. Uh, income inequality, that's what he should be addressing. The income gap between the richest 1% of Americans and 99% widened uh, to a record margin in 2012. The 1% earned 19.3% uh, of household income, breaking a previous record uh, set in 1927. In income inequality in uh, the uh, U.S. has grown uh, for more than three decades. The pre-tax income, the top 1% of households, rose 19.6% compared to 1% increase for the rest of the American people. On top, the 10 richest households represent just under half of all income uh, in the year. And uh, this is by Emmanuel uh, Suez. He's from the University of California at Berkeley. We'll have more on this uh, later here. The top 1% uh, American households have income above Three hundred fifty thousand dollars. That's two hundred fifty thousand pounds last year. The top ten percent incomes exceed uh, one hundred and fourteen thousand dollars. Incomes uh, among the uh, rich fell more than thirty six percent between uh, that was during the depression two thousand seven two thousand nine compared with uh, a decrease of eleven point six percent for the rest of America. But in the last three years. 95% of all income gains have gone to the uh, 1%. So in other words, the other people only got 5%. During the Depression, they lost 36%. This is uh, the richest, the 1% operators. And uh, the rest of the nation fared a little bit uh, better. They only lost uh, roughly 11.5%, but they did not have very much, quote-unquote, uh, to lose. So that sort of was uh, was their story of where they uh, were going with this, and we'll see if we get one final item in here, because we are the news in 10, and we'll try to continue to be the news in 10. We'll be the news in late today, but that'll be okay, because we have plenty of uh, time. The president wants Congress now to lay the Syrian vote. This is from a local political uh, magazine. And the only thing, uh, Kerry... Uh, he had to say was, well, we can't wait too long, and now he's claiming he didn't uh, misspeak in uh, talking about the Syrian strikes. That's why he said itty bitty of small strikes. Um, this this guy uh, is a joke. Uh, said he didn't misspeak in London when he suggested a way for Syria to avoid military action. Uh, who knows? You meant to say what you did, correct? This somebody asked him, oh, Hank Johnson, a representative from Georgia, in response to a question at a news conference on whether uh, President Assad could do anything to avert the strike. 
he said sure he uh, could turn over every uh, bit of his weapons to the international community within the next week without delay. Then he quickly uh, tried to downplay his own suggestion, saying, uh, but he isn't about to do that, and it couldn't be, uh, it can't be done, uh, obviously. After he uh, dismissed it uh, as rhetoric, this is just all over the place and uh, silly. When a secretary of a state, uh, a minister of state does that, um, people um, just shake their head because uh, obviously uh, it's not a serious situation. Um, diplomatic language is one thing, but in this case, it's nonsense. This is uh, Boston Red for Boston Red on the World on the 20th day of September 2013. Good day. Tell me what you think of the proposal from Russia. I think it's a beautiful proposal. Um, it, it was a brilliant move by Putin. Uh, he uh, looked strong before his domestic audience because he solved this problem. Um, he's actually done a favor for Obama by giving, getting Obama out of a jam, which I think he was maybe looking to do because there were indications earlier in the summer that he wants a good relationship with Obama. Um, and, um, you know, he looks like the good guy in all of this. He gets support throughout the world for, for not being a warmonger. Why would Assad agree to this? Oh, well, I mean, I think it gets Assad out of a jam, too. I mean, if it's a way of, of uh, ensuring that there's not strikes on, on his territory, I mean, he doesn't actually need the chemical weapons to accomplish anything. Chemical weapons are not the most effective weapons to use, so it makes him look like not such a bad guy either. And the United States talked about retaliation, that you can't let a country get away with that. Did the, would the United States be letting him get away with that if they chose this Russian proposal? No, I don't think so, because there are other ways that you can punish Assad. You could uh, take him and his uh, regime to the International Criminal Court. So I don't think it's the end of the story. But I think, you know, Putin is a judo master. <laughs> and I think this was a judo move. Really? You don't win in judo games by being the stronger player. You do it by having surprise attacks that, uh, that throw your opponent off balance. All right, so tell me how they verify this. I mean, we went through this with... Uh, the world went this went through this with uh, Iraq and Saddam Hussein, and it was a delay tactic. Yes, and I think that that's a real issue that um, you know very smart people are going to have to come together and solve the question of who does the inspections, exactly how you put forces on the ground to secure the chemical weapons, who's responsible for giving the okay, saying that they're all taken care of. I mean, there are huge challenges ahead, but I think it's an option that's really worth exploring. That's potentially win-win for both sides. So maybe Congress doesn't have to vote, but the president and it still has to put the pressure on or not? I, I think if the pressure comes off, then the issue goes away, right? So you, you've got to have it sort of both at the same time. It's got to be in a pincers. Either you agree to this or there's still a threat of military action happening. And, and so would it be better if Congress went ahead and said, if... This, if you don't live up to this, then we might strike or we will strike? That might be one alternative. Mm -hmm. That might be one alternative. But something to keep in mind, too, is that Putin is taking pressure off of the home uh, court for this because he had a bunch of mayoral elections today where uh, his opponents either won or did much better than was expected. Um, and so he has a reason to deflect attention from what's going on in Russia to what's going on in the international community. Well, it appears that the United States was on the verge of war a week ago. And now a potential solution. How did how did that happen? By accident, it looks really? like, right? Is I that mean, possible? Well, that's what that's what everything appears to be. Um, I mean, you know, there's two off the cuff uh, remarks yeah, in the yeah, row. Yeah, one that one that says it's, it's a red line. Yeah. Oops, I'm not sure I meant it. And the other one being, uh, uh, you know, oh, let's let's have him destroy all of. I mean, it kind of boggles weapons. the mind yeah, that really U.S. Does. diplomats wouldn't have considered that. Well, I think Putin yes? was just waiting for an opportunity, and I think he got it. Yeah.